Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Law and Finance Show. Now, one of the things that you run into when you're running a law firm is how do you stand out, especially if you're in the industry of serving people who have been injured or really representing clients in that space. There's a lot of competition. But the question is, how do you make your law firm stand out? And so you want to tune in to today's guest. So stay tuned for more on today's show. So without further ado, let me welcome my guest, Jude Shaw. Welcome to the show today. Daryl, thanks for having me on, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Jude, I'm very interested in having a conversation about, you know, how you made your firm stand out. But before we jump into that, for those that aren't familiar with you, can you share a little bit about your background? Uh, sure. I, I've been uh, practicing for uh, 20 years or so. Um, in 2012, I started my own law firm, Judd Shaw Injury Law. Uh, we uh, began representing medical providers, um, having claims against automobile insurance companies for non-payment of um, medical services connection connected with auto accidents and different various types of accidents. Uh, and uh, later on, a few years uh, ago, I, I found a real good synergy in representing both the person who's involved in the accident and the medical provider themselves. A lot of synergy there um, can improve both um, the quality of care um, as well as uh, give our, our clients who've been in injured uh, the ability and access to, to great treatment so that they can return to their lives as they've once known it. And so we opened up our, our second sort of division, which is representing uh, injury cases. And so today we have sort of two sides of the office, one representing the medical provider and the other the injured victim. Awesome. Awesome. Now, I guess with such a long history in, you know, working in injury related cases, you know, was that kind of the as you were going through law school or was that really the focus that you were going into? Or like, how did you kind of find your way into like, hey, injury is where I want to really spend my attention? You know, uh, what a great question. I, I had thought about that a, a little while ago about, you know, how, how did I get here? Right. And um I think I was always fascinated by the law. I, I watched law legal shows, whether it be Law and Order or The Practice and, and these shows and um, and the way they were helping people um, through through intellect and strategy and, and 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 legal prowess. That always really impressed me. I always found it um, just a, a really incredible um, way to give back. Um, uh, and so, you know, I wanted to be a lawyer and I, I did remember, um, that originally I had the idea that I would come out after my first case and there'd be cameras everywhere and, you know, and right. And, and everybody wanted my opinion about this big case and everything. And, uh, just like I saw it on the TV shows, right. And, and, and I knew I could be an actor, but if I could have, you know, six plus people in a jury box that, uh, it had my undivided attention. They had to listen to me. This was the way to go, right? And uh, and sure enough, after my first case, it came out, and everybody's just walking to the stairs at the courthouse and in and out. And I'm, nobody, nobody cares about my case, right? But uh, I did, and it mattered to me. And uh, from that point on, uh, it was it was uh, about the client. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, that's always interesting when I talk to different lawyers, and they, you know, when they talk about like how they saw it on shows and then when yeah. it came to reality. <laughs> yeah. Now, one of the things that I'm curious about is, you know, as you started, you know, like I said, looking at injury, you know, what was it like, you know, going from just practicing the law of representing clients to then starting to learn the business side of running a firm that focused in that area? You know, Terrell, um, running a company is hard work. It's really very difficult. And I think it's it's made more difficult day in and day out um, from everything from regulations to your to your, you know, to your human resource asset. Um, it, there's constant learning, there's constant challenges and struggles. And um, uh, 
uh, you know, working a case when I when I was, you know, just playing lawyer, um, I was able to really get into my case and, um, and, and, and focus on that. And I knew I knew the law. Uh, I knew my case. I knew the facts. I, I knew strategy. Um, and then recognizing that when I in 2012, when I when I went to straddle and actually be a business owner and you realize that I, I'm selling my time, but you know, you're, you're selling your accounting service. Someone else is selling widgets. Another person selling tires, another person ice cream, right? It, the, the, the challenges and the, and the pressures that are on any organization, particularly a growing organization, I think are quite the same, w- whatever industry you're in. Um, we all face the same things. And I think we face them when you're one to 10 people and 10 to 20. And as you scale, you, you find that, you know, even Apple, when they were probably 25 people at one point, had the same struggles that I did when I was 25 people. Gotcha. You know, and that's very interesting because one of the things that I also wonder, and, and as I talk to different lawyers is some of them have mentioned about, you know, when you made that transition from just, you know, playing the lawyer to then being the business owner for some is like, for some, it was an emotional process because like they had spent so many years becoming this lawyer to where now it's like, hey, I got to be this thing called a business owner. And it's like having to let go. Like, was there any kind of friction for you and just like transitioning to like, hey, I got to kind of let go of some of the practice of law and focus on actually building the business? The biggest friction is dealing with what I believe is a company's greatest asset. It's people, HR. And, um, and what I had to realize was that people work differently than I do. Um, I'm an early riser, you know, I'm up at every day by 5.00 AM. I have a really clear morning, um, routine, um, and, and, a, and, a, and a way I get into the morning and attack my business, but somebody strolling in at eight 30 doesn't mean that they're any lazier. They're not harder working. They're not whatever, you know, they may be on the nine, nine o'clock routine at night because now it's like quiet and they're going through their notes and, and they're working that way. But, you know, that's just one of the, you know, concepts of where I realized that I had to invest in my people as opposed to thinking they were just simply going to invest in me, right? Well, I was giving them a job and I was signing their paycheck. So wouldn't they just give, you know, everything they have to me and the clients for in, in return of that? It doesn't work that way. Um, and you have to really invest in your people in making sure that they have opportunity for growth. They feel respected and, and dignified and they are accountable and they are, are trusted. And, and, and in that respect, you can count on them for uh, development of ownership of processes and systems and, and, and not be micromanagement. And, uh, and so all of those things was the biggest challenge and continues to be a challenge because at my age and 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 some of the other team members that you know work for their company we grew up differently and we we think differently and we have different whatever right and they call them millenniums and gen z and all these other things but you have to understand that you have to understand where they're coming from so that you can make it make sure that you're investing in them the way i'm investing in any other part or any other member of my team so i think the greatest challenge is continuously figuring out ways to give back to your team, invest in your culture and make your people the best they can be. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a very interesting point because even as I talk to a lot of lawyers and law firms, I mean, that wasn't something you were probably taught in law school. (laughs) That wasn't a class that you took. So were there any resources kind of along the way that you, whether it's a book or something or just even mentors or just people that you've learned from that, started to open your eyes to that reality i love your questions and i hope um that you have a lot of listeners listening to whether it be this podcast or <clears throat> your other podcast because the information is is the gems that's where it's at when i started no i, I didn't there were podcasts nobody had a podcast in 2012 and 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 you know and but i was always a voracious reader um and when i would read a book I would go and try to do things that I read out of the book, whether it be development of my team, my processes, systems, things of that nature, operations. And then I would tell everybody. And then I realized, why do I have to make it sound like I I, I learned this on my own? I, I, 
I, now I, then I took a bookshelf and they said, Hey, everybody, I read some great stuff on this uh, subject and it's in this book and here's the book, right? L l l pass on that knowledge, pay forward. And, um, you know, and, and let other people know about it. And so I didn't have those resources. So mine came from mistakes, right? And some were costly. Um, you know, you, you spend a whole month, a bunch of money on a marketing campaign, and you realize you, you missed the point, you missed the target. And that's a lot of dollars or, or even our hiring and, and losing and not retaining uh, certain, you know, team members, um, and learning how better ways to have have done that. And so I, I, I learned through reading, I learned through uh, visiting other law firms. I have visited over 60 law firms nationally, personally gone to those law firms, sat with law firm owners, sat with their team, exchange ideas, pay it forward, give each other information. You know, they don't comp they're not here in, in New Jersey across the street competing with me. So we're transparent. We, you know, and even if you are in New Jersey, I'd, you know, we're all fighting the same fight. Right. And so I, I try to go for resources, but I think the greatest source of information, knowledge about what we're talking about is find a mentor. I love what you said. That is so true. Find somebody who you can contact, whether you're paying for it on a professional consulting side or, you know, somebody who's been there, but somebody who's been there, done that and done it the way you'd want to do it. Pick their brain, get that information. That's where that value is at. Awesome. I love that. And, you know, that's one of the things that we really hope the show serves as a purpose for a lot of a lot of lawyers or law firms is introducing them to, hey, some of the lessons that they can learn from others, as well as, hey, potentially someone that they could probably ask some questions and say, hey, you know, do you have a recommendation for a good mentor or a good resource? Because I, I've definitely found that to be similarly true even in building my own accounting and cfo practice of just you can learn the hard way on your own or you can you know learn from the experiences of others so i, I think that is amazing yeah that's it, it it really is great right and uh i think for everybody out there you know i, I have somebody i have a, a paying consultant who i i consider um as, as like a mentor and i have another person who i go to that is just incredibly generous with the, with that time and you know is only looking objectively to help me that's the only the, the benefit is i just want you know no stake in the game right and and with the paying consultant you know here i come and I, every thursday morning i know i have a list of questions and i can ask those questions because that person has been there before you know my coo is doing this how do you how would you deal with that problem um i'm i'm i'm, I'm getting to the point where uh, i need to hire a new case manager where how's the best hiring practice right all of these things really matter and they intrinsically have incredible value because if you hire the wrong person that that's you know costs what seven times that person's salary over the three months it, that they didn't work out both in the investment of your time and, and money in them and you're back to square one so get it right and and if I haven't, you know, I, I, I want to go to this person because this guy's hired 40,000 people. I've I've hired 400. So he's going to have a better, you know what I mean? So that's that that has such value. Mentorship has incredible value. Listening to think, you know, podcasts such as yours, they have value because hopefully in the end, you just make a little less mistakes than somebody else did. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I want to transition a little bit to, you know, when it came down to your business and really getting out there to brand what your firm does. And because, I mean, when it comes down to law firms, those that support injury cases, it can feel like a crowded field. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so as you kind of navigate, like, how did you start to think about like, hey, how are we going to stand out in what can feel like a crowded field? Yeah, no, and it, it not only feels, it, it is. And there are some big players out there investing huge amounts of money in digital and outdoor and TV campaigns that can really flood the market um, in with noise. And so I think that I did that in a couple stages. The first one was that I knew that the most important thing would be for our company to have a set of core values and a purpose. 
and stay to that core values and the purpose. And when you have a team that builds on a culture that rallies around that core value, that's the first step because you can't start making a lot of noise and trying to get cases and not be able to live up to your promise, right? That's going to be a campaign that's, that's very short winded. And so what you need to do is our promise is at Judge Shaw Injury Law, high quality legal representation and a first class client experience. Those are two parts. And we do that very intentionally in, in, in both sides, not only just being your lawyer, but making sure that you have an excellent customer service experience that at the end you say they, they did what they said. They, they returned my calls. I didn't have to chase a lawyer. I always was updated. They gave me the status. I felt ownership in my case. They held my hand through it. They made it easy. They handled all the paperwork. If we say we're going to do that, we have to do that. And so the first step was ensure that we live up to our promise client to client. So that way, when they are done with our service, they become raving cheerleaders, uh, you know, super fans, and they're going out and they're organically passing the word that if you've gotten involved in an accident, family and friends, you guys got to use Judge Shaw because, you know, that firm is, is amazing. They're great. And so we realized that the first thing to do in standing out in the crowd was really making sure that every client becomes your best advocate and, and, and maintain that relationship because, you know, statistics are they will either be in another accident or they will know somebody who's been in an accident and you want them talking about you without having, you know, to actually pay those dollars to do it. So someone can spend a million dollars in a TV campaign, but if they're not delivering their promise, they're going to get a new client, but that new client is never going to come back or never going to talk about them again. And so if I'm spending just 25% of that um, budget against that firm, but we live up to our promise and those clients now are talking about us outside of that, that re ROI is so much greater, right? And then the second part of it is to do that in, in uh, out of the box thinking. You know, there's some lawyers now that are using TikTok and having TikTok accounts, and they're very clever. You know, a criminal defense attorney is doing these TikToks where the police car comes and, you know, pulls up behind him. And he's like, if you've been stopped at rate, but people are watching it, right? Podcasts are a great way to get information out. A book, writing, uh, you know, being an author. I, I, I've, I've written uh, two books. One book is coming out on December 6th. It's a children's picture book called uh, Sterling and Nugget the Dragon. It's based on this series that I'm doing, Sterling the Night, which is our firm's mascot. And the idea is teaching empathy. And empathy is a very powerful thing in personal injury, right? We, we need to empathize with our clients who are struggling and going through very difficult times. And then also a book uh, on, on uh, called work, Working the Wow, The Art of the Client Experience. That'll be released in 2023. And that book focuses on customer service within the law firm. And so these are just ways that, you know, if other lawyers are reading my book, then maybe they're going to send me a case because they know how I'm going to handle the case as if they were handling it themselves. So I think right now in today's world, you have to break away a little bit from the TV, the right. Everybody used to be in the phone book until the phone book was like, who's in the phone book anymore? And so you just have to sort of like always be on the cutting edge of what's happening so you don't get lost and you're not the name in the phone book and you think you got the best ad in that phone book now and realize nobody's using the phone book anymore, right? And so now Google ad services and, and understanding SEO and digital marketing, all of those take work. And so I think that you really have to, number one, treat your client right. And number two, stay current. Awesome. I love it. I love it. You know, and now one of the things that I'm, I'm very interested in, you know, people knowing is how do they find you online and just see the awesome things you guys are doing and even just, you know, will they be able to find the book online as well? Yeah, great question. Um, so at my site, my website is juddshawinjurylaw.com. There it is, J-U-D-D-S-H-A-W, injurylaw.com. You can also reach me at demand judd.com um, both will take you to this site um, that's my site it's got a lot of good information there it also has our um, uh, Facebook and, and on Instagram our IG handle that could be followed um, anybody uh, there's a contact us page there um, for so it's got a lot of information best way to reach me there um, I'll also give you my email um, my email is judd at juddshawinjurylaw.com j-u-d-d -D at and, uh, and just email me if you have some more information, happy to pay for it, get back and, um, you know, 
let other lawyers know. I mean, that, that's where it's all about, the exchange of ideas. I always get something out of it as well. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, before we wrap up, one final question I always love asking every guest that comes on. I mean, we talked about a ton of different valuable insights. You know, if you were to tell someone like, hey, you, I just did an a, a interview on the Law and Finance show. Hey, here are two things I really want you to listen for in that conversation. What would be those two big takeaways you would want them to have? Get your culture right. Every organization has culture, um, whether you like it or not. It's either intentionally the culture you want or a culture that's created by default. But there's always a culture, and you can create a culture of excellence, a culture of aggress aggressive litigation, a culture of uh, you know client service, a culture of whatever, the or it's just going to be what it is. And I think that if you're more intentional about it, your organization is heading in the right direction. And uh, two is uh, you don't know what you don't know. And then when you start to learn, like I have in reading books and, and podcasts, is then you start to learn how much, how little you know. <laughs> so the second part is, is be a learner, be a life learner, read books contact me. We'll, we'll come visit my law firm. I'm, I'm here for you. I've, I've had lawyers who come and, and quite frankly, we roll out the red carpet for you. You could sit with my intake team. You could sit with my case managers. You could talk about my leadership. We, 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 we want to do that because I think that giving back is the most important thing. It's how I've gotten to where I, I am today. And so be a constant learner, visit law firms, speak to lawyers, read books, listen to podcasts, because if you're not um, I, I think that your clients suffer because then, then, you know, somebody else knows more than you and it means that, you know, the clients, you know, less off. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Drew, thank you so much for being an amazing guest. It's been a pleasure having you on today. Terrell, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. You just checked out the Law and Finance Show, where we bring you great, insightful interviews that talk about the business and the financial side of managing a law firm. So subscribe to the show and check out more of the great interviews.